on, and we heard that there was a heavy bombing around St Paul's Cathedral. But what I cannot get over, and what I have stood up there and tried very hard about, is that I cannot get into my church. And I think you are wrong on that Sunday to occupy these steps as you have. This is Marjorie, so not happy I with the protest. Um, I walked over here and I stood down the road there. Every building, bar and poles, was ablaze. And I said to myself, the hand of God is on, is on St. Paul. And this morning, I went into church and I was praying to God about you all. And I, I thought I would wander over and let's see what was happening. Uh, you have every right in this world but to make a protest and to uh, create a situation. Sunday at St. Paul's. Giles Hassersley's written a piece in the Sunday Times this morning saying that these are possibly the worst protesters ever and accusing them of laziness for not getting up in time to leaflet the bankers as they walk past. And it's certainly true that even well gone 10 o'clock, there are a few signs of life. When I arrived here just after nine, there's almost nobody about. There's certainly nobody in the media centre. Already it's clear that this is far more like it. It's grassy and look, there's a yurt in situ, looking very enticing. And here are the tents and a meeting taking place, which I'm about to go and join. Okay, are there any more working groups that we, want to be back? Media. We're just about to... Uh, we're taking yeah. hands, I think we had one over here first. Yeah. So please be aware at all times, we are in a sea and there are people out there who are not nice. Just to point. Okay, we might so. not be aware, we can get young people down here. Um, and um, there's also a national lobby in Parliament. Yep. Yeah. Hello, so yes. The motto here, Creed, not Greed. Well, the bells have not been silenced. Or perhaps they've just taken my advice to try and bring them out. Oops. The bells are not from St Paul's. They're from this church. And this, of course, is St. Vidas, where worshippers who turned up to St. Paul's this morning were instead directed. From the south side today, in, in the sunlight, in the glorious sunlight on this October today, St. Paul's does look truly magnificent. And you can see here all the fruit of the 40 million restoration that took 15 years, that was recently unveiled. Emergency access, keep clear, says the sign quite clearly. Behind this, it's anything but clear. It's one o'clock now and the camp is a lot livelier. Uh, there seem to be quite a few tourists who've come to have a look, oddly enough. And today there is, seems to be a new meditation and prayer room. Listen, it's a bit um, more at market than the old one. This is no longer just about capitalism. The protest is getting much bigger. And here we have Paul with a stock fees poster. Paul, well, what has the university tuition fees got to do with um, capitalism and this protest here? Uh, you okay. you, you repeat again the question. Um, why are you protesting about fees? Ah, uh, fees. Uh, 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 we are 99 percent. This is the best message for capitalism. 99 percent, 1 percent pressure in the 99 percent. For future back pressure. It's British, isn't it? Toilets have now arrived, or lose. But on them there's a notice saying, please do not use this toilet. That's how you can tell this is a British protest. The campers are now gathering on the steps of St Paul's. It would normally at this time of day on a Sunday be bustling with worshippers and visitors, two to three thousand of them. That nasty pigeon just there, only just flown away, just actually landed on my back and whacked me. It beat me with its wings. Honestly, the violence of pigeons today. It's taken quite a while for this meeting to get underway. 
and um, this is the platform being set up and organised. Um, it's interesting. Internet the day before yesterday, when I was filming one of the general assemblies, um, as I embarked on a commentary, a man, a protester, stood up and blocked me from filming, which gives an interesting insight into the future for a free press should these people manage to uh, take over. Okay, as a Cariarius, you are visiting your son here. Yes. You're from Greece. Well, I think this is something international with many people protesting about everything, but uh, no clues, no solutions. I mean, they just want to demolish things, but they don't come up with a, with a uh, viable solution. Yeah. Well, Greeks really have problems, but uh, over here I think it's a vague idea just to protest about things. Nothing in particular. Would a protest like this in Greece have helped solve Greece's problems? No, I don't think protests in general have problems because they don't come up with solutions. And Very good. It actually is a bit like being in a video have game as Raven Rabbit. Yeah, we intend to make profound changes within our system of government and I believe we need to be alert to do that. Well, it's a sacred Sunday morning and I don't usually take my text from the Sunday Express. But they were here yesterday and they lead off with their usual shit. <laughs> Bride braves St. Paul's Tentamore. <laughs> they also say later in their editorial that uh, we have closed St. Paul's. Not true. This to say, uh, has anyone actually uh, thought why Occupy London and Occupy Planet Earth is not being covered in the newspapers or not much anyway, as it should Mate, be. Mate, what do you mean it's not been covered? I've written the thousands of words the in the last week about you. I mean, it's all Has I'm writing about. I've had about two, three page leads in the Times. Yeah. Don't tell me you don't read and the Times. Now they're proposing a multi-faith service with a sermon on the Any blocks? Including atheists, of course. No. But Anyone, therefore, that is interested in helping with this or that has a direct interest in wanting to be a part of this, my name is Matthew Richardson. I'm a common councilman for the ward of Coleman Street. And that's the neighbouring ward to this ward, well, isn't right, it? Yes. Um, you've come down here today. What's your first impressions? Well, my first impressions are that this place, although it looks like a mess, the unfortunately, pleasantly, all of the people here are well mannered and well natured. Uh, and they are being peaceful and protesting in, in a fair and even handed way. The problem, however, is that the, the manner in which they're protesting has meant that there is a severe disruption to the church and the surrounding area. Now, the corporation is no doubt studying the legal niceties here, but I mean, it could be weeks, if not months, before they can be persuaded to leave. Uh, yes, that's absolutely correct, and we, we do have a leading council dealing with the matter now, and uh, the current projection is that it may be as many as three months before the, the site is cleared. Three months, and do you think the cathedral might stay closed for that entire time? Uh, I understand that it will be staying closed until the health and safety issues can be resolved, uh, and, and that means that it may be closed for the poppy ceremony and also for Remembrance Sunday and the Lord Mayor's show, which would be a terrible shame. Services. This house is God's house and it's God's day. And what about their point though? Because Jesus was a radical, wasn't he? He was indeed, but he always made space for worship. Do you regret the decision, I'm not sure if it was by Giles on his own or with the Dean and Chapter, to allow them on in the first place? We didn't allow them on in the first place. Um, but uh, do, you do you regret any of the comments made by Giles supporting them? Giles made those comments um, without consul consulting chapter, um, which he is quite entitled to do. But no, I don't regret that he said that people should be allowed to protest, which is what Giles said.